Hello guys, Winston here. I know on Twitter I said I'd be switching gears for my next video, but as it turns out, it was just easier to keep iterating on my camera slider design while it was fresh in my mind. The camera slider I'd made for the ShapeOko 3 video shoot was largely constrained by time. I had two weeks to put something together and I didn't get a chance to explore all the features I'd been hoping to implement or work out any of the bugs I'd discovered as I went along. The biggest problem with version 3.0 was that the alignment of the skateboard bearings against my EMT conduit wasn't absolutely perfect. This meant I didn't have the full 8 points of contact with the conduit, and my camera platform would actually rock back and forth a couple degrees if the weight it supported wasn't centered between the rails. The secondary machining operation I had to do in order to mount the skateboard bearings at a 45 degree angle introduced errors into the locations and orientations of my threaded bolt holes. Secondly, I realized after talking with Edward about the quirks in the Shapeoko design that a platform trying to make contact with two rails at four points is almost impossible without some sort of adjustment or deflection in the system. This is why you almost always have that awkward fourth wheel on your carriage plate that spins freely. Unless your system is perfectly aligned or forgiving like a car's suspension, you end up trying to over-constrain the system. Because of these issues, I decided to make a triangular camera platform with six primary points of contact. This time, I'd mount my skateboard bearings horizontally and vertically to reduce the complexity of the design. And with the two extra bearings left over, I could use them to completely constrain the platform to the rails, meaning I could run my slider upside down. This led to another consideration. Because I was using three points of contact on each rail axis, unless I could easily detach one of the skateboard bearings, I'd have to remove one of the conduit clamps in order to slide my platform on and off the rails. This wasn't acceptable to me, so I had to devise a way to quickly separate one or both of my bottom wheels from the platform. I decided to use MDF tabs that would clip onto the main platform, secured by small neodymium magnets. These tabs would be glued into a bracket that held the bottom running bearings, allowing me to remove them as one sub-assembly. These pieces happened to be aligned against other features hard-mounted to the platform, so there'd be very little chance of accidentally knocking them off. I added a riser on the top of the platform so I could adjust my ball head mount without jamming my fingertips against the MDF. Version 3.0 didn't provide enough clearance underneath the adjustment knob. Although the position of the three top bearings would be fixed, the horizontal bearings that provide lateral stability would be mounted on bolts that allow them to be adjusted vertically. Furthermore, because the bolts would be attached through a slot, I could fine-tune their spacing to provide consistent pressure against the EMT conduit. The bottom bearings would also be attached through slots to provide vertical adjustment. Adding in these degrees of freedom allows the platform slider to maintain a full 8 points of contact regardless of manufacturing defects. On the off chance I wanted to run my camera platform like a dolly, I decided to make the GT2 clamping fixture removable. I'd use an MDF tab to pin it in place. With the design work completed, I moved on to fabrication. With the exception of the platform, all of my MDF pieces were sent through MakerCam to generate G-code. Because of pockets that shared vertices with the outline, it was simply easier to run the platform STL through MeshCam instead of patching up an SVG. Knowing how I oriented my platform job in MeshCam, I arranged the other pieces in an Inkscape canvas so that I could cut them out immediately afterwards. Once I had G-code from both MeshCam and MakerCam, I copied and pasted them into a single file and ran the job. I had a few instances where I forgot to put tabs on internal cutouts, so I had to worry about smaller blocks rattling around inside pockets and snagging the end mill. But other than that, things went pretty smoothly. One thing I noticed was that some of my pieces ended up being about 15 thousandths of an inch undersized. This was likely due to insufficient tensioning of my GT2 belts, which resulted in some backlash. In places where this caused problems, I sanded or manually milled down the interfering faces. Not a big deal, in the future I'll tolerance my parts to better account for uncertainties in the final part size. Once I cut out all my pieces, I cleaned them up with some light sanding and glued them together. With the bearings bolted on, I calibrated my slider to fit the EMT rails. Compared to my old slider, version 3.1 runs with a lot less friction because the bearings are oriented with greater accuracy and ideally, only three of them are ever carrying load. The new platform coasts further than version 3.0 and has almost no lateral or angular play. 
I'm really pleased with how the bottom running bearings snap onto the platform and how well the platform holds onto the rails. As for integrating the NEMA 14 stepper motor and one axis driver, that's a project for another day. This wraps it up for Cam Slider 3.1. Feel free to drop comments, questions, and suggestions down below. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back with a new project in a week or two. Or three. <laughs>